is just doing where, oh, all this, where the string is going, they're all cut out. Yeah, all the old ones Skin. I haven't got these down here yet. Yeah, I've got to put them in. Yeah. I can see if these line up properly first, then I'll, then I'm, in case I've trimmed them down a bit more, then I'll put the old in. Yeah. And what are you up to, Phil? Uh, well, I'm just transferring the original uh, doubler and uh, angle brackets off the Canadian. This is where the control rods pass through here. Yeah. Uh, to operate the rudder and the um, elevators. Yeah. This so, is former 31, is it? Yeah, former 31, and obviously um, it sits um, the other one. Yeah. Like that. Effectively, yeah. Haven't cut the hole just yet. Um, but that's how it sits in the aircraft, and the two control ones. Yeah. Go through there. Well, Actually, interestingly, the Canadians uh, made these brackets and cut these notches so that you can get the control rods out through the frame. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Whereas on Jane, uh, this is just one solid reinforcing plate and you have to feed Passing the control through. rods in yeah. when you build it. So it must have been uh, done to expedite removal of control rods or to expedite the assembly process because the Canadians did carry out quite a few of their own little tweaks yeah. um, to speed up the production of the aircraft. Yeah. Uh, see, this is what one big, uh, one big solid frame there. That's how Avro and the British made these um, formers. Yeah. Uh, but the Canadians made the former out of two. Instead of two formers, they've got four yeah. formers that are actually joined in the middle yeah. with, so a, be easier with for a doubler. Out and everything, so it? instead of trying to make a massive great C shape, yeah. you've actually got two hockey sticks yeah. on this side, two on the other side, so four pieces, yeah. which it speeds up the production of the formers and probably speeds up the assembly yeah. line as well. So it's interesting to see the license build version. Um, in Canada, versus yeah. the original Avro. Yeah. yeah. Oh, of course. I just watched Dave put this in. Bit of a jigsaw to get it in. It is jigsaw. Yeah. yeah. There's my one, just there. Uh, that one is where rivets are. Oh, you're in the Certainly middle of this yeah, too. Right. Right. Exactly. From the outside, I put, yeah, put on the inside and sold in the place and around the outside. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're now going to you're film when it's somebody who works to between one and one and a half foul tolerance. Oh, oh I'm, I'm Mr. High Tolerance. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, it caused a great, it caused a laugh anyway, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Down a bit. Right. There we go. That's it. That's about it. Yeah. 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 Next one up. Yeah. I'm going down now. Yeah. Well, that went in quick, Phil. Yeah. It's I think, done, I think. It's done because it's such high yeah. tolerance work. It, yeah. it fits straight in. The yeah. I think it was a bit quicker than uh, red wine gave. Yeah. Right. There. Yeah. Did you get the perfect insertion? I did. Yes. 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 That's a nice shot there. Yeah. The blue. We're just saying we like to keep the blue. You know, the blue looks quite nice, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. But compared to a couple of weeks ago, it's fantastic progress. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'll agree with you. <laughs> I couldn't have done it without, I couldn't have done it without my wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 John's working the front spar of the French wing, removing all bolts and fittings. All bolts and fittings will go back where they came from, hence the cardboard planner. The bolt vary in length from inboard to outboard of the spar. This includes keeping the top and bottom fittings separate. All the bolts will be able to be used again, but when it comes to just chain, all the bolts and fittings will be replaced. These bolts will be okay to go back, will they? Yeah. Would you on there just change? Will you change them if you have to do this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah any corrosion on them, and that, that's it. Yeah. So they're close, close tolerance. Yeah. For like this. Yeah. But um, on these ones for the rigs, we, we've got that nylon nuts on them, but on those just plain nuts, and, and they're uh, peened. Yeah. We actually. You yeah. actually distort the, the thread on them to stop them from undone. What's when you come undone, you, yeah. you, 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 well, you're well, not you doing do, the thread any good. Okay. Will you do the same again on, when you put new ones in? Oh Pick yeah. Them, them up. Oh yeah. Stop coming off. Yeah. You wouldn't use a, a locking washer underneath then. No. 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 No, no washer on them. Yeah. No. The other side was just just a nut. Yeah. That's it. Very simple. Thing. And we got the paint builder for running yet? Yes. Oh. Yeah, we've got a few little, little bits done. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose you'll be really keen that up soon, will you? The paint. Well, when you get when you get to the inside of the paint, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll make a The similar it. corrosion has occurred around the steel mooring points. They were bolted to the aluminium web of the front spar. 
directly under the mooring, air and moisture was unable to penetrate, but around the steel mooring dissimilar corrosion took place. This was taken from the latest Rivet Club email by Andrew. Before we take this off, we've got to take those pins out. Hopefully, hopefully we're getting a, uh, a hydraulic. Carries on there. Yeah. Uh, hydraulic pullers are yeah. getting out. And then we've got to take them off. Four screws hold them on. Yeah. And then change that. Yeah. Oh, it's coming on. It's Same fat drilling the skin through the formers. All the skins, formers and fittings will be pinned in place before any parts are riveted together. They will be then taken apart, scuffed down, painted and reassembled. See the shoulder on one side, on this side, on the steel plate and you've got a steel plate this side. So you've got to press it that way, have you? Yeah, so it's got to be flipped over and pressed yeah. out. Because it, there's no way you'd ever knock that out. Yeah. Oh. All you do is you, you damage the pin. Yeah. And as they haven't got a press at the moment, they're buying one. Oh. Andrew's bought buying one as far as we know. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully we should have that in the next few days. We'll yeah. be able to press them out, get the screws out, and get that plate off. Yeah. It's the same on that one. Yeah. And that yeah, one's. John was saying about that. That's yeah. actually got to be replaced, that web plate. That Web piece, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's rotted. Yeah. This one's alright, isn't it? Well, it seems so at the moment. We don't know until we get these off. Oh, uh, yeah. And then See, look underneath it. Yeah. But it, there is a few a few spots on it that yeah. are uh, a bit of corrosion, but. Yeah. You know, as it's never going to fly or anything like that, yeah. so. How right, far do you go? Yeah. 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 It's good. It'd be good I mean, enough for taxiing. I mean, you've gone a lot, lot further now than what you thought you'd have to do, I think. Yeah. So I've got to do these two holes. Those two holes here, still a blank inside the rear fuse line. So I didn't want to do them until uh, I got the frame att attached in. Because, because of the damage, you know the, the the violent nature of the the way this thing uh, the roof collapsed on it. Yeah. You can actually slightly lose uh, position. Yeah. So now that's in. Um, I'm going to mark out those two holes. Yeah. And also um, these notches here and that, the screw, that yeah. rebate there for the end. Yeah. yeah. This is not the one you was working on earlier, is it? So you've got to fetch it out. And... No, I'm going to mark it up. Oh, you've got to mark it up there, are you? I've got yeah. to do some drilling as well. Yeah. So, um, these frames, there's a lot of faffing around with yeah. them. Uh, every time you do one, you've got to do those notches. Um, each one of these stringers has got a little cleat on it there as well. Yeah, you've got to leave a place for that. Yeah. So, um, oh, you've got all those to drill. Yeah, up, that's you? right. You've got all these to fit. Yeah. Every, every single stringer has got a cleat that attaches the frame to the stringer. Yeah. And also these holes here have got to be transposed as well. Yeah. Um, it's a question of 
all those. Well, will all these holes be used, or? Um, well, that's a good question. Uh, that is, this is what we're working out as to what is actually um, yeah. required for our What about our these build. anchor nuts here? Will yeah, they well, again, we've got to find out, is that something that the Canadians put in yeah. uh, that's nothing to do with uh, World War II build? Yeah. Because it obviously flew post-war. There's various pieces. Yeah. yeah. All the control rods go down there as well. Yeah. There's an awful lot of there's, work there's still to do on yeah. in each individual frame. Form, that's right, frame. exactly. Yeah. Um, and the final bit will, will be to build the bottom structure. Yeah. Yeah, which is another quite complex. Yeah. This is the new 20 ton press, arrived on March the 22nd. This will allow John and Keith to press out the studs at the inboard end of the spars.